The next thing we have to discuss here is the composting. So in the composting, this is the term used to describe the aerobic decomposition of the organic materials, but in controlled condition. The composting process is affected by temperature, pH, moisture content, nutrient supply, and the availability of oxygen. So here you can see this is a typical composting process graph that is provided to you. This is divided in multiple four categories. Very first category here is the mesophilic phase. Then we have thermophilic phase. Then we have the biological transformation or cooling phase. And last is the compost maturation phase. So here you can see this is the time. Maybe few days are involved in it. Up to the two months this can be there. And this is the temperature. So initially the temperature was cool. When the decomposition will start, the temperature will rise, rise, rise. It can go up to the 60, 70 degrees Celsius. And after that decomposition, automatically temperature cooled down. So this is how temperature behaves in the composting piles. Suppose you have a composting pile. What is the best way to check whether the composting is started or not? Just use a kind of wood. You can insert it into the composting hump. And then you can take out and touch the wood. And you can just sense whether the temperature is high or not. So if temperature is high, it means the composting has been already started. If temperature is not high, so something wrong with your composting unit. Or you can use the thermometer as well to see the temperature directly. So by the both way, you can check whether the composting is started or not. And this is a kind of aerobic decomposition. Because this is aerobic decomposition, that's why temperature is rising. Always remember in the composting, anaerobic decomposition is not included. Because in anaerobic decomposition, the harmful acids are formed, which we don't want. So in aerobic decomposition, the good nutrients are formed that we can use for the plant nutrient source as a compost. So that's why we do the composting. So let's see the composting in detail here. The composting is mainly affected by the multiple factors. Few factors are already written here. The very first factor is the temperature. In the early stage of decomposition, the stage is called as mesophilic stage, in which the temperature is generally in 25 to 45 degrees Celsius. The microorganisms generate heat, which raises the temperature after this mesophilic stage of the pile. When temperature increases above the 45 degrees Celsius, the activity of mesophilic organisms, microorganisms, stops. All the mesophilic microorganisms, which can work on the this temperature range, are stopped working now because temperature is too much now. And the new organisms will start working here, which are called as thermophilic microorganisms. And these become active, which works in the temperature range of 45 to 70 degrees Celsius. And these thermophilic microorganisms release the gases like methane as well, carbon dioxide as well. So this is the temperature affected composting. Then we have the next character or the uh, thing here, that is the pH. In the early stage of decomposition, organic acids are formed, which causes the pH of pile to drop to about 5. That we have seen in the case of landfills as well, which is similar to the composting. Then what are the nutrients and how the nutrients are changed here? So the number of nutrients must be available to the microorganisms that are attacking and degrading the compost pile. The most important nutrients needed are the carbon for their energy. So what they are feeding? They are feeding on the carbon of the waste material, nitrogen for the protein synthesis, potassium and phosphorus for the cell division of the metabolism of the microorganisms. So these all nutrients should be present in your compost, uh, in your waste material. Then only you can do the composting and make compost. Otherwise, it is not possible because microorganisms cannot survive without the nutrients. So nutrient is another very important factor in the case of composting. The next thing, very important character of the compost is the CN ratio. So what is CN ratio? CN ratio is nothing. It is first just the carbon to nitrogen ratio. For the microorganism, that should be in the form of 25 to 35 parts of available carbon to the available nitrogen. It means the CN ratio should be 25 to 35 is to 1. So for every one nitrogen particle, there should be 25 to 35 carbon particles should be present. High CN ratio inhibits the growth of microorganisms. High CN ratio means there is no nitrogen available in your, in your wastage material. Only carbon is available. So that is denoting the high CN ratio. And that is 
just not just not favorable for the microorganisms which slow down the decomposition rate low sowing ratio accelerate the rate of decomposition but may cause loss of nitrogen as ammonia so that's also we don't want if you increase the nitrogen amount too much then there would be loss of the nitrogen gas maybe in the form of ammonia maybe in the form of nitrate all is possible so that we don't want so low cn ratio is also not advisable the best cn ratio is in the range of 25 to 35 is to 1 and the rapid depletion of oxygen supply leading to the anaerobic condition in the case of high CN ratio, low CN ratio, so that we don't want. So CN ratio is another very important factor in the case of composting. Next thing that we have to discuss here is the availability of oxygen. So due to unavailability of oxygen, I have told you anaerobic situation will be created and results in the formation of the ammonia sulfides like gases, which is very poisonous in nature or toxic in nature, which we don't want. So that's why whenever you are making compost or you are doing composting, the proper aeration is very much important. For that, what you have to do, you have to perform folding exercise in the composting hump. So what you have to do, you have to just turn up or turn down the composting. So the materials which are inside that you have to take outside and the outside materials, you have to send them inside. So that is turning back your composting unit. So that turning back, back, in weekly basis or maybe fortnightly basis is very important whenever you are doing the composting otherwise the toxic gases would be formed there that we don't want so composting is recycling process only not a energy recovery process because here you are not getting any energy energy recovery process would be in the case of rdf or in the case of that burning of the wastage material so that you are not doing here so composting is only a recycling process so this question already asked one time in the past year's papers so that you can remember this is all about the composting of the things composting of the materials to talk about the cn ratio of the multiple things so this table you have to remember in the examination they can ask you about the uh cn ratio of the multiple things so here you can see the highest cn ratio you can absorb uh observed in the case of sawdust what is sawdust sawdust is if you have gone to any carpenter shop where the carpenters are doing work so you can see there on that area the small uh, dust type of material or small materials of the wood you can find out that is coming out from the processing of the wood material if any carpenter is just reducing the thickness of their wood so uh, equipment he will use which is giving a uh, dust type of particle or paddy uh, straw type of particle that type of uh, particle you can see there let me draw it so these type of circle materials of the wood you can see there that is what that is sawdust that sawdust is having highest cn ratio 500 is to 1 for every 500 part of the carbon, there is only one nitrogen. In the mixed municipal solid waste, it is it should be in the range of 50 to 60 is to 1. Dry leaves and weeds have 90 is to 1 ratio. The foliage of the crops, the, the upper part of the suit part of the crops have 40 to 80 is to 1 ratio. Corn stacks are having in the ratio of 60 to 1. Cow manure CN ratio, that is 18 is to 1. Foods and scrap CN ratio is 15 is to 1 grass clippings so that cutting of the grass whatever is left that is 12 to 20 is to 1 cn ratio it is having humus this is important or the upper part of the soil is having 10 to 1 cn ratio and crest leaves generally have 30 to 40 is to 1 cn ratio so these cn ratio you have to remember again i am repeating anything can be asked in the examination so be ready for that remember the cn ratios Then we have to start the energy recovery. So the energy recovery, the result obtained from the bomb calorie meter, I have already explained you about the bomb calorie meter, where we just measure the calorific value of any waste. Higher would be the calorific value, higher heating value. So that waste can be used for the energy recovery or making of any kind of energy. If the calorific value is too much low, so you cannot that use use that waste for the energy recovery or making of the energy. So our gross heat value GHV, 
this included the two terms are used here in the warm calorimeter you will get hhv hhv is the higher heating value or you will get the ghv that is the gross heat value that is the included energy content in the vaporized water that is produced in the higher heating value you will have only materials heating value in the gross heat value you have the total heat value which is the energy given by the product and and the energy used by the vapor present in that material to vaporize as well so since water vapor usually not condensed that energy lost and more realistic estimate of the energy that can be recovered during combustion is known as the lower heating value or net energy that you will exactly getting after just in the case of vaporizing the water or after the vaporization of the water the composition of the municipal solid waste varies around the world so its energy content also varies so in developing countries a small fraction of what waste consists of manufactured materials such as paper metals plastic etc which means that large portion of food waste since food waste has low energy content so heating value of municipal solid waste in developing countries is lower than the developed countries so that is the main problem of the energy recovery associated with the country like india because in our country that municipal solid waste is that we are getting is not having too much calorific value the calorific value of our solid waste is too low as compared to the wastage provided by the countries like usa or the developed country like usa or european countries so that's why the energy recovery is not very easy in the case of developing countries like india because calorific value is too low because we have the metals plastic paper material like it and we also have the proportion of food waste on it so in the other countries or developed countries the food food waste is low so on that scenario the energy recovery can be high there calorific value of the waste can be high there so this is what the energy recovery is here this particular uh, table is giving you the calorific value in mega joule per kg of all the common materials this graph is again or this table is again important you have to at least have idea that which material is having high calorific value and after that which material is having low calorific value so here you can see in the polythene range also we have different amount of the calorific value you can get in the polyethylene polypropylene polystyrene the calorific value is good very high it is in the range of 46 46 or 41 mega joule per kg or you can say 46000 kilo joule per kg sometimes in the examination they can give you in kilo joule per kg as well then this should be 46300 this should be 41400 similarly go on while in the case of this polyethylene terep pellet that is very low energy recovery or the calorific value material that is only 25.6 or 25600 kilojoule per kg of energy it will give newspapers gave 18.6 megajoule per kg wood is also similar to the newspaper 14 megajoule per kg yard wastes food wastes are you can see too much low in the energy recovery or in the calorific value only 7 or 6 megajoule per kg of energy you can get while in the case of coal the anthracite coal the highest quality of coal you can get have the calorific value of 29000 30000 kilojoule per kg you can see that the polythenes have higher calorific value as compared to the coals then bituminous coal after the anthracite the second best coal is this bituminous then we have sub bituminous 20.5 to 27.2 megajoule per kg lignite coal or pit coal is having lowest amount of energy again only having 11000 17000 range of kilojoule per kg energy you will get while in the case of it is highest in the fuel oil that is the fossil fuels 48.6 megajoule per kg natural gas is having more than that also 46.5 to 51.2 almost around 50000 kilojoule per kg of energy you will get so i hope it is clear to you